Hi, my name is Michael Gutter. I'm a professor at the University of Florida, and I teach and talk to families all around Florida about money management. Right now, I'm going to talk to you guys for a little bit of time just about some of the top things you can be thinking about while you're in high school right now about your financial future. So let's take a look. We're going to start off by thinking about what are the key things that we have to do when it comes to personal financial management. Let's take a peek. This is the model of financial security as we understand it. It really revolves around several concepts. At the bottom, we can see that there's two things that we begin to take action on, and we can start those right now. The first is managing our cash and credit. We're going to break down some of the top things we can do with that, but in essence, it's making sure about the money coming in, the money going out, and any money that we're writing IOUs for. Who are we owing money to, and how are we managing that process? In other words, are we being financially responsible? If we're being financially responsible, we also can start putting money aside for the future that we want. And that's where wealth accumulation comes in. We all have things we want to accomplish in life, whether it's going to college, whether it's buying a home, whether it's buying a car. And all of these things require usually some form of putting money aside for the future. And we tend to think of that as wealth accumulation. But if you're managing your money well and you're building money for the future we want, there's also the future that's going to happen that we didn't anticipate. That's where risk management comes in. We might get sick, we might get injured, someone might damage some of our property, we might lose our job. There's any number of things that unfortunately can also happen to us that we didn't plan for, and it's important for us to protect against those as well. And oftentimes when we're younger, we rely upon our families for that, for health insurance and car insurance, but as we get older in life, we're going to have to take those responsibilities on for ourselves. In addition, it's important to note that these three circles represent the things that we can manage, the things that we can directly control. But there's other things going on that we have to understand that will affect our decisions as well. The first is where are we in life? As we're starting off, we have certain priorities. The older we get, our life situations change, and as does our needs and the preferences for the things we want. So those needs and wants are going to shift as we get older and our situations change. So that's one of the things we have to think about. There's also whether or not we have access to different types of investments, different types of bank accounts, as well as different types of insurance products, and whether or not we even know that we're supposed to use them. So that issue of access and awareness is something we also have to plan for and something we have to anticipate. Lastly, what's happening in the world around us oftentimes is beyond our control but it's certainly going to influence our financial management system. So the status of the economy, whether or not we have inflation, what interest rates are doing, how's the stock market doing, how's the job market doing, all of these things are also going to affect our financial system. So where do we begin? We're going to begin by setting goals. Now what does that look like? Well, we're going to start by creating SMART goals. And these goals are going to be specific, measurable, adaptable, realistic, and time bound. Smart. They're going to answer three really important questions about our future. What is it that we want or need? When is it that we want or need it? And to put it bluntly, how much is it going to cost us? So this helps to give us a destination that we can plug into our financial GPS so that we can have a plan that we're able to work. So remember, the first step is knowing where you want to be. It's pretty hard to have a plan if we don't have a destination or a goal in mind. Now, how do we manage our finances? Well, let's take a look. I recommend a visual system. The calendar-based budget is a great way to begin. We start by getting a list of all the things that happen to us on a regular monthly basis. What expenses are we going to have? What types of obligations are there? What types of debts do we have to pay? We add in things that might be variable in nature from utility due dates, even grocery shopping. And lastly, we add in our paydays, the money that's coming into our system. So this helps us to keep track of what money's coming in, what money needs to go out, when it needs to go out, and what it's for. This calendar in particular represents something that might be typical for a college student. So as we take a look, we see this person has rent due, they've scheduled when they have to send off their utility payment, their cable payments, even their car payments. So all of these things are on there. And then in addition, we also list when someone's going to get paid. Now why is a visual system helpful? It helps us to avoid pitfalls that can happen to us when we're managing our cash. For example, if we look at this particular student's budget, their rent is due on the second of the month. 
but they don't get paid until the sixth of the month. Now that's pretty challenging unless they're using a simple system for organization. They'll know that they needed to have saved money from the last paycheck of the previous month in order to make sure they make their rent payments. So this is a simple example of a budget we might see for a young adult. And again, the calendar system is something that not only can work for an individual, but is something that can work if you have roommates or a significant other that you're sharing financial responsibilities with. Now the other side of this is credit. Now credit's pretty important in addition. Credit is not only about what we're borrowing, how much we're borrowing it, but it's also understanding that lots of people are paying attention to what we're doing with our money. Lenders, landlords, employers, insurance companies, banks are all looking at our credit score in order to decide if they want to do business with us and how they want to do business with us. There's five major things that go into considering what affects our credit, and all of these will be in our credit report, but they also go into this score, which ranges from 300 to 850. Now, what's in that FICO score? Well, take a look over here at the pie chart that we have. The five factors are whether or not you've made your payments on time. If you pay your bills late, that'll hurt your score. How much credit are you using? How much are you borrowing? If you're borrowing too much, that can hurt your score. How long have you had credit? Which is simply going to be a function of time. And then, of course, we have how many times are you applying for new credit applications? We don't want to overdo it. And whether or not we're using different forms of credit. Student loans, car loans, and mortgages are installment credit. Things like credit cards are what we call revolving credit. In the end, we'll probably use some mixture of these to reach our financial goals later on in life. But what's important is making sure that we manage this effectively so that we keep our score up and don't cause any eyebrows to raise when we want to do business with people. Now, how do we monitor all of this? In addition to checking our score, we also need to make sure that no one's doing anything in our good name without our consent. The best way to do that is to check your credit report regularly. You can check it three times a year using annualcreditreport.com. It's free. And of course, it's one of the ones that was set up when we had the FACT Act established several years back. You can do it online, you can call, or you can even write for it. If you're under the age of 18, technically you shouldn't have any credit in your name, but you still want to check your credit on a regular basis to make sure that that's true. And once you're 18, monitoring it regularly is best for your own protection. After all, nobody knows what business you've conducted better than you. Now, what else do we need to do? Well, sometimes we talked about managing our cash and credit. And the other thing we want to talk about is whether or not we're going to build wealth for the future. There's a lot of reasons and things that we'll want to work towards, but I want you to remember these three keys to saving. Set a goal, make a plan, save automatically. Three tips you can have. We start with our SMART goals, then we figure out what account and what amount do we need to have. That's our plan. And then we find a way to make it that we don't have to deal with that every month. We automate it. This can be through an employer-provided plan someday, or simply using things like bank withdrawals, automatic debits, and other systems that we can work with our financial institution to set up. You gotta slam dunk your savings is the way we often refer to it. And there's a great video clip at the bottom that you can check out on your own time to see, learn more about how you can slam dunk your own savings. Now, part of this, when we talk to young people about this, is thinking, well, I don't want to give up what I can do today. Stop thinking sacrifice. This is about paying yourself in the future. And that's one of the most valuable things we can do. After all, who else do we want to invest our money in other than ourselves sometimes? So you want to do it, just do it, right? Make it part of your daily routine. Make it part of your weekly routine. Every time you get a paycheck, make sure that you're setting that up so that you don't do it. Remember, automate it. So it's not something you have to manage on a daily basis. So if you want to learn more about personal finances, I welcome you to, of course, sign up to be a Florida Saver. If you want to take some additional workshops, we have great classes from Family and Consumer Sciences as well as 4-H that focus on learning more about money management. You can check with your local extension office about those. We've also provided some additional videos at the bottom you can check out, everything from vacationing on savings to how to plan for your holiday shopping so that you don't overspend your budget. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. I look forward to seeing you in the financial marketplace.